calculations with significant figures. The first video is about how you looked at numbers and you told how many significant figures were in those numbers. This video is about how you do calculations and give your answer, give your answer with the correct number of significant figures. There are two separate rules. The first rule applies for addition and subtraction. The second rule applies for multiplication and division. We measure all the time. You see here, this is an enormous tree that people could actually drive through that was in uh, out west. So let's look at some other calculations here. So first, let's look at the rule for addition and subtraction. Now you notice we have two different balances here. Now this balance on the left only measures one place to the right of the decimal. Now this balance on the right measures four places to the right of the decimal. So you know the one on the right has a lot more significant figures. You expect that. So how do you do it if you calculate it and you have one measurement from one balance and another measurement from the other balance? Well, the way the rule works is the more zeros to the right of the decimal, the more precise a measuring device. So let's say we measured something that was exactly one gram from the balance on the left. And then we measured something that was actually one gram exactly, but it was 1.0000 on the balance on the right. And we added those two masses together. Well, the mass would be 2.0 grams because we see with these measuring devices, the one on the left was at least precise. There was only one place to ride the decimal. And the one on the right had four places to ride the decimal. But we can only be as precise as our least precise measurement, and that's why we only have 2.0, and we don't have any more places to write the decimal than that. So the way the rule works, if you want to write down the rule, it says when adding or subtracting, the answer cannot have more places to the right of the decimal than the least number of places to the right of the decimal in the problem. This is different from multiplication and division. This is only addition and subtraction. So what we're going to do is do a few problems. I think we've got seven here, maybe. So add and subtract the following using the correct number of significant figures in your answer. So the first, we have 6.5 plus 8 plus 4.37. Now notice, all we want to look at is the places of the places to the right of the decimal. So if we look at the first number, we have one place. And then the second number, we actually have zero places. And then the last one, we have two places. So that means we'd only have one place to the right of the decimal. If you add all these numbers, I got 28.87. So we're simply going to change that to the number 29. Zero places to the right of the decimal. Let's look at the next one. 13.25 milliliters. Now, one thing I do want to point out, which I didn't say on the last one, is notice it was in grams. These are in milliliters. Most of these things are measurements. So even if in the problems in the book they're, they're, they don't put measurements, these really apply to significant figures measurements. So we have 13.25 milliliters plus 10 milliliters plus 9.6. And we notice we have two places to the right of the decimal, two places to the right of the decimal, and then one place to the right of the decimal. So when I added all these, I got 32.85. Now to make that one place to the right of the decimal, it'd be 32.9. I'd round that up. Next one. 0 0.0853 grams plus 0 0.0547 grams plus 15.07 plus 8.056. Now notice we have here four places to the right of the decimal. And here we have four places to the right of the decimal. And here we have two places to the right of the decimal. Here we have three. And so that means we would go with two places to the right of the decimal in the answer. And for this one, you end up rounding it up, you get 23.27 grams. Let's do a couple more of these. Uh, 350.0 minus 100. Now you want zero places to the right of the decimal because notice this one only has one, but the 200 has zero. So we write that as 150 and put a decimal point right there. Let's do another one. And I think this is our last one, 27.68 minus 14.369. We have two places to the right of the decimal, and here we have three places to the right of the decimal, and that means we'll put two places to the right of the decimal in the answer, and the answer will be 13.31 grams. Good job. So how, how does it work when you multiply or divide? Now that's a little bit different. When you multiply or divide, you just go by the least number of significant figures. You don't count places to the right of the decimal at all. So let's look at some examples. So the first one we have 2.6 times 3.78. Now we see the first number has two significant figures. The second number has three. And so that means in our answer we only want two significant figures. I think when I uh, multiply these out and it's meters times meters, so it's going to be meters squared, I got 9.828. So to change that to, to two significant figures, I end up with 9.8 meters squared. Let's look at another one. 0 0.075 grams divided by 0.030 milliliters. 
And let's look at the significant figures. Now, if you remember the rule, you start from the Pacific side, draw through all the zeros, that leaves you two significant figures here. So we have two, and then you do the same thing here, and it leaves you with two significant figures here. So you want two significant figures in your answer. And when you divide those out, you end up with 2.5 grams per milliliter. So that's the way that one works. Next one. Now this one's going to be doing a volume, because we're going to be a length times a width times a height, and it'll be centimeters cubed. A centimeter cube is actually the same as a milliliter. So we only want to count significant figures here. This has three, this has two, and this has three. So we want to have our answer in two significant figures. And so that would be 32 centimeters cubed. Next one. And this is division one. And notice both these have two significant figures. So we want two significant figures in our answer. And that would give us an answer of 0 0.28 grams per centimeter cubed. Now remember, the zero in the front is just a placeholder. So that's not a significant figure. So the answer is written in two significant figures. Next one. Now this one is also doing a volume. A decimeter cubed is going to be our unit for this. A decimeter cubed is actually the same as a liter. I'm not sure if you knew that. We'll see that a couple times during the class. Now let's look at the number of significant figures here. We have two significant figures, two significant figures, and then three significant figures. So we want two significant figures in our answer. And the answer for this should be 0 0.0. 0, 2, 8 decimeter cube or liters. Now remember these zeros in the front are placeholders, so we really only have two significant figures in our answer. Follow the order of operation when rules for significant figures are used. So what happens when you have multiple rules in the same problem? So let's look at the first problem. We have two different rules going on in this problem. First we have the rule of subtraction and addition, and that's inside the parentheses, so you do that first. And second we have the rule of division, and both of those are different ways that you do significant figures. So the first problem we have, one place to the right of the decimal with a 7.8, one place to the right of the decimal with 7.8, and then four places to the right of the decimal with 3, 0.3426. Now when you do all this out, you would end up with simply 7.5. So I'm just going to write that down, 7.5. It's a 7. And then the next one we have 1.15 plus 0.82. And that would give us two places to write the decimal and then give us 1.97. So I'll write that down too, 1.97. Now when I do 1.97 and 7.5, the smallest number of significant figures when I'm doing that division is two significant figures. So I only want two significant figures in my answer. And that would be 3.8 meters per second. Let's do one more of these. So let's say we have 6.8 minus 6.39. Now the first number is one place to the right of the decimal. One place to write the decimal, two place to write the decimal. So we want our answer with one place to write the decimal. And I believe this would simply be just 0.4. So we have 0.4 here. So you do that first. And then we have, so that's one, only one significant figure. Then we have 1.12 plus 0.82. When you do that, we end up, this number would be, sorry, 1.94. And with 1.94, this is three significant figures in this number. That's a 1.94, and only one there. So you only want one significant figure in your answer. And so the answer would be 0.2 meters per second. So that's how you do it when you have different rules going on in the same problem. You follow the order of operation. The last thing I want to mention is just real briefly, scientific notation and significant figures. With scientific notation significant figures, the number at, f at the front is only the number that's important. So the N is where the number of significant figures are counted, not anything else. The other just tells you how big or small the number is. So for example, if I say 1.0 times 10 to the third, this number only has one significant figure, so we simply just look at that one. If I look at the number 2.0 times 10 to the third, this actually has three significant figures because I look at the 2.00. So that is, that is three significant figures there. And then the last one is 3.000. Now if I look at this number, I actually have four significant figures. One, two, three, four. And so this has some four significant figures. So this concludes calculations with significant figures and also scientific notation in significant figures. If you have any questions about either, either one of these, let me know. Uh, we'll see you in class tomorrow. Thanks.